All right, friends, I just got a Costco. I got a pair of winter gloves that are silicone grippers and they have the finger so you can use them on your cell phone. They were $9.99. Got my cheese wisps. Oh, I got some roast. I'm gonna make a big pot of Texas style chili where you use meat cut up and not ground beef. Dubliner cheese, so good. A big thing of almond flour. A huge bag of no added sugar chocolate chips for baking for the holidays. Some more sweetener. Cream cheese. And I'll tell you what I'm doing with everything here in a second. It was busy in Costco tonight. It's Friday. I just got off work. Ran to Costco for some weekly groceries. Actually, that'll last me more than a week. Um, so I got the six pack of cream cheese. That was $7.89. It's $3.89 for two packs at Target and Walmart. So that's a really good deal on the cream cheese. And I use it a lot. The Eye of Round Roast was $15.53 and I got two roasts. I don't know if I'm going to cut it all up into small pieces, pan fry it and make a chili or just one and use one for a roast. I'll decide. The Dubliner cheese was $12.31. Ugh, that is so good. The gloves were $12.99 with a $3 discount. So they were only $9.99. They're for runners. But... I'm thinking when I'm in Boston and New England over Thanksgiving that I will, um, you know, I'll need some thinner type glove and be able to use my phone. The Cello, the Wisps were $9.79 for the cheese crackers. The Monk Fruit Sweetener is $8.99. I grabbed the second bag because I'm going to be doing some holiday baking. Same thing with the almond flour. That big bag was $11.99. And then the dark chocolate chips, 32 ounce bag was $10. I get a 12 ounce bag, I think, of Lily's for $5. So definitely was a good deal on that. So my total was $86.28. I paid 75 cent tax on the gloves. So $87.03, which I don't think is bad. Um, a lot of that will obviously last me more than a week. Um, although the wisps, I've been really enjoying the wisps, <laughs> um, at night with a little bit of peanut butter. So we'll see. I mean, those are just like a bag of chips for me, really. But the cream cheese, the almond flour, all my baking stuff will last a long time. And those roasts, even if I make a big pot of that, um, chili, I will freeze most of it. We'll see. I may just make half and then freeze it. I need to go to Aldi and get mozzarella cheese for baking. I need to get um, tomato sauce in the can. And I need to get beef stock. Um, so, I will tell you while I'm pulling out of the Costco. It's busy in here, by the way. That um, to make chili keto you use your meat ground beef or in my case ground beef is expensive right now so i'm just going to use a big old roast and chop it up in little like small bite sizes and then pan fry it then simmer it but to make chili keto you don't make an all tomato base most of the base of the soup will be like a beef stock and the rest of it will be or bone broth and the rest of it will be, you know, some tomato sauce. I won't use beans, but I will probably put riced cauliflower, which I didn't find here. I was looking for. I'll probably put riced cauliflower and a little bit of onion and pepper in mine. But really, it's going to be spices, meat, and a little bit of sauce. And then I'll make some almond flour or keto um, cornbread to eat with it. Oh, it's getting cold here. So I haven't decided yet, like I said, if I'm going to make big old batch or just make a small batch and then freeze that roast and then cook it as a roast at another time but that I felt like was a really good price and it's a pretty lean roast though so um if I bait if I do it in the crock pot I'll probably add some bacon or something to it making it into a chili I will saute it maybe in some bacon grease just to give it a little fat but I don't know 
So let's go home because now I'm hungry for dinner, which is probably a bad idea that I went in here after <laughs> work, but before dinner. All right, and then in the morning, I'll probably end up at Aldi to get the rest of the ingredients and start my chili in the morning. I'll bring you along. Guys, we're at the post office. Oop, post office, I got some friend mail. I got a, le a card. Oh, I got a card. I love cards. And what does it say? Look at the car. Look at the kitty. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, thank you. Thank you. My birthday's coming up. It's at the end of the month. But I appreciate it. It's a big one. Um, let me make sure nobody's return address is showing on this. No. Okay. Well, look at how decorated it is. How exciting. Oops in here. I love packages too. I wish I could send you all cards and packages. I have to be careful. We don't want to show things of other people. Oh, but this card was from Barbara. Barbara, I really appreciate it. Thank you. Let me get in here. Oh, it's a card. Guys, I love cards. And this car, oh, look at that beautiful baby. It says it's Halloween. Oh, thank you, Yvonne from California. But let's look at the baby again. Oh, looks like my Alex. She said she saw this stuff and thought of me. Oh, guys, look at that. So pretty ribbon. That is beautiful. Hold on. Gotta get into it. Vaughn, you did a good job. Oh, guys. Look at this little gnome. It's a shelf sitter. Is that adorable with his little feet? Oh, this is gonna go in my kitchen on my kitchen shelf because he'll hang. Oh, look at that little gnome. Oh, you guys are so thoughtful. I appreciate each and every one of you and your thoughtful gifts. And I have to remember, I got some Duke's mayonnaise in the mail too. Thank you. Oh, and it's a bigger one. Look at him with his little feet and his little plaid legs. Guys, these are adorable. They're going to sit together on my shelf in my kitchen and I cannot wait to show you. Thank you so much, Yvonne. Those are gorgeous. I really, really appreciate it. Now we're leaving the post office. I about got into a fight with somebody. I mean, not like a fist fight, but like an argument. I walked in, it's my post office. It's Saturday morning at 11 o'clock, it's busy. I think they're only open till one or two. And there was a young woman, I don't know how old she was, standing, we have a line, and it goes around the counter. And there's little X's on the floor to tell you where to stand. Six feet, people are getting sick. I'm not getting the COVID. I don't have time for the Rona, no. So there was a gentleman at the counter and I was standing my six feet and this lady pokes me and says, can you move up? No, I said, no. We're socially distancing, six feet. She was standing right up on somebody else. I said, not six feet. So this girl at the counter who was line jumping, by the way, turns around and she's like, eh. I said, ma'am, who are you? Who are you to determine that it's okay for me to be sick? Because I don't want to catch it. And this gentleman here doesn't want me all up in his grow either. I had a sneaky suspicion she was line jumping because she kept trying to just get them to take her money and they were like, you have to wait your turn. So they were the two ladies working, finished with their, or the, the one lady finished with her customer and knew that this girl was not next in line and said to the gentleman, you're next. And she jumps up there and she's like, just let me go. I've got, I'm late for my kid's game. So? So I did say to the person in front of me, she's very important. 
she has to go first because she's more important than the rest of us. She didn't like that. And I said, you started it, sis. So there was my fuss for the morning. I'm not proud of that, but I was irritated. You should not be line jumping. And the other lady should not be trying to get me into a situation where I'm going to catch the Rona. I don't want it. So there. Now I'm going home and we're going to make a pot of chili. So I'm making it Texas style. I think I mentioned that earlier when I showed you the roast that I bought. We're going to chop up that roast. We're going to chop up garlic. We're going to get the big soup pot out and a big wooden spoon. And we're going to make... Texas keto style chili. Just a little heads up of what that is. So in Texas style chili, there's no beans and they use steak or roast, not ground beef. Now I have always used ground beef. I don't have an issue with it. However, the ground beef at the store that I was at was more expensive than the roast. I'm like, it's the same meat. Why is this warm? So I'm just gonna chop it up and make it. Plus I feel like it's a little more hearty. Uh, most of this base will be beef bone broth, and I will show you what I purchased for that, and some tomato, but mostly, tomato has a lot of carbohydrates in it, but there's going to be tons of spices and flavors. So we're going to go home, and we're going to get that started. It has to simmer for several hours to make that meat tender, which I think is the benefit of using ground beef over using uh, like a stew meat or a roast is you have to cook the stew meat and roast longer to get it more tender. I'm okay with that because I'm going to be home all day. I have housework to do and I have a sweater that I'm knitting on. I'll show you my sweater. Um, it's super cute. I've had to rip it out once and restart it, but that's okay. I'm past that part. I'm past the point of no return now. So I've done the hard work of this coloring and I'll show you. Now it's just knitting the body and the arms. Well, I have to break off for the arms, whatever. So I'm going to stop here and let this lady out because that's how I am. I have to, you know, make up for my post office shenanigans. I am a nice person and I get a lot of comments that you're a nice person, but I'm human and please don't yell at me in the post office. So I'm not, um, you know, I have to stick up for myself, right? And I'm not going to just ignore it. Anywho, so I also have a Dollar Tree haul to do today and some housework that needs to be done. I need to vacuum and I might turn the heat on because it's a little chilly. It's 56 out. It was 40s last night. The cats are freezing. <laughs> they're, they're, they're cuddling up with me now in bed, both of them. When it's very warm out or in my house, um, they tend to sleep downstairs where it's cooler. So the I have a three level condo and the basement obviously is the coolest the main level I keep at 74 upstairs sometimes gets warmer heat rises I'm just not paying I'm not turning my air down 74 is it because it gets very pricey to air condition my condo and I don't mind I sleep with a fan every night so when it's super warm upstairs they um now there is times that I have turned it down when it was too hot I'm not gonna say that but you know when it's too warm upstairs I'll sleep they sleep downstairs um but when they're chilly those two little heat seekers get in bed with me and try to cuddle up and this morning I woke up with the blanket over me and a cat under my neck and one behind me and I said boys well good morning we gotta get up we got things to do so I've done two Dollar Trees today I've got two more to go to tomorrow or later tonight I did my grocery shopping last night at Costco and this morning I have the rest of the stuff at Aldi oh and I am starting to um, buy stuff for Christmas and Thanksgiving so Thanksgiving specifically, my niece and I are going to Massachusetts and Connecticut. We're going to stay in a town centrally located and then we're going to go day tripping and we'll have her dog with us, but neither here nor there. Um, we're going to be at an Airbnb over Thanksgiving on Thanksgiving day. So I think the plan is we're going to make charcuterie trays 
she's vegetarian. I am not. Um, I told her I would help her and we could cook her a Thanksgiving meal, but I just want meats and cheeses. I just want a charcuterie tray is all. And um, so I am starting to buy some meat and cheese to do that. But now I'm home. Hey guys, let's make some chili. So right now in this pot back here, let me move you for a second. In this pot, I am putting just a little bit of frozen onion that I had left. Um, onion has a lot of carbs in it, so I try not to use too much. Um, some green pepper. Just want to use up what we have left. And let me find it. I found it. The big old spoon. <laughs> this is the spoon for this big pot. So I'm just going to get this started. And this is just to bring a little flavor profile to the party. I have three giant cloves of garlic that will end up going in it to cook down. Then we're going to start cutting up this meat. So this is Texas style. Texas style chili. They don't. Um, doesn't call for ground beef. It calls for like a roast or a steak of some sort. Um, so I grabbed this top round roast at Costco. And I cut mine into like bite-sized pieces. And I'm making a lot of this, ro of this chili because I want to put it in my freezer. And I told you why it's keto, or how it's keto is, oops, some of the ingredients. Um, the one main ingredient that makes it keto is I use bone broth instead of bouillon or stock. You want to read your ingredients. This is organic beef stock, contains less than 2% of salt and a little caramel color. There's no preservatives in that. There is no um, sugar, cornstarch, extracts. It's just beef bone broth. It's a little more expensive. I'm not gonna lie, it was $2.99 at Aldi for each one of those. Uh, but because I have so much roast here, I thought I will just make a mammoth batch of it and then put it in um, the freezer in serving containers like not individual serving sizes, but, um, you know, like a couple servings per container. And because this takes such a long time to cook, and by that I mean it's going to simmer for several hours. So right now I'm just chunking up the meat. And it'll break apart too because it's going to think crock pot. It's going to go low and slow. So right now I'm just chopping the meat. I'm gonna ready to throw in here in a second. I'm gonna throw in the garlic. Let that soften up. Then we're gonna put the meat in, right? Because that's important. And then we have seasonings. I made a little seasoning blend. Um, obviously, if you do how whatever makes your seasoning your seasoning, but mine has a quarter of a cup of chili powder. It has three tablespoons of onion, dehydrated onion or minced onion. That is twofold. It brings a lot of flavor. It also absorbs some of this liquid to kind of act as a thickener. I put coriander because that brings a little brightness to it. I put some celery salt. So I'm not gonna use a bunch of other salt because it has celery salt. I put paprika, a tablespoon of paprika, and then a tablespoon of dried um, garlic. But here's how it all is gonna work out. Once the meat, or once I get it, put the meat in, I'll put like a third of this in, let the meat cook. Then we'll go and add the, start adding tom the tomato product. I'll add another third of the seasoning. And then at the end, I'll add the last of the third. 
And what that does, it just boosts the flavor profile, right? Like this is a lot of meat here, but it will cook down. And if you bought like this, like I did, you could totally do half of it for chili, put half in your freezer and use it as a pot roast sometime later. Um, but I'm just thinking for me right now, since I'm cooking this chili and I have all the ingredients, let's just make a big old bunch of it. So that's what we're doing. I've got the onions here beside me doing their thing. I'm going to finish chopping up this meat. Um, into small, you know, smallish pieces, not tiny. You want to have somewhere for it to go. But if you're too big, then you're talking fork and a knife kind of a meal here. And this is definitely a spoon kind of a meal. And then once the meat has been browned up and ready, we'll add the broth, the tomato products. Oops, excuse me. And then we'll get it going. So I will come back once the meat has done its thing. So all I'm gonna do is throw it in this big thing in batches probably and let it cook. I'm not worried about browning. I know you should brown it to get the more flavor, but honestly, it's gonna cook so long it should have its own goodness. And then the bone broth, which is actually made with beef bones. All right, so I'm gonna turn this up because I do want this to cook a little higher to get the meat a sear on it. Then we'll put the stuff and bring it to boil and let it simmer. And the, we're twofold on the simmer. Um, soften up this meat, get it into a you know nice softer consistency, blend the flavors with the meat, and also to reduce the amount of liquids and kind of thicken it up. Since I'm not adding any type of bean or thickener to it, it really needs time to um, evaporate to make it thicker. And that's how I kind of skirt putting more all tomato sauce in it. And I have 64 ounces of bone broth, but I'm not sure how much of that I will need. I'm going to cover it you know, cover the meat, but it hasn't all cooked yet, so I don't know. All right, we'll be back. All right, this is done. We're gonna add the can, and I'll show you in a second of what it is. And I chopped it up with scissors, but it's Hunt's Tomatoes, San Marziano style, garlic crushed red pepper. That's why I didn't add too much heat, because I knew I had those tomatoes to go in. So they're just gonna give us a little texture, right? Then, I think one of these is going to be sufficient. And this is the bone, beef bone broth. And then I think I'm going to go with tomato paste. Right? So this is 32 ounces of bone broth. Yum. I'm going to... I have tomato sauce, but I also have tomato paste. And I'm wondering which will bring me more bang for my buck. Probably the tomato paste, if I had to guess. So we'll go with paste. We're going to use a whole can of it. And then we're going to add some more. Ooh. thought I cut myself, but I did not. And then we're going to get this up to, it's just just tomato paste. Um, I'm going to add a little bit, of, two packets of my sweetener. Just cut some of the acid on the tomato. If you don't do keto, you could certainly add um, two teaspoons or a tablespoon of sugar, like your regular sugar. But I do keto, but a little bit of sweetness We'll cut down on the acid in the tomato. So I just do two of my sugar packets. And we're going to let this come to the boil. And you know what? I am going to add in two cans of the sauce. I think is going to be appropriate. And some more 
of the um, seasoning packet. And this is gonna cook for several hours. So if I need more tomato, I can always add more. You know what I'm saying? So that was two eight ounce cans of tomato sauce. And then I'm gonna add the last, or the one third, a second third of that. And I'm gonna leave the last of it for the end. I'm just gonna now bring this up to a boil, turn it down to a simmer. So it's simmer down time. And j oh, look at the color in there, guys. Do you see that? I don't have quite everything cooked yet. So I'll let it simmer for an hour or so. Taste it for seasoning. Maybe I'll need to add some more red pepper flake. I don't know. We'll see. But for now, I want to leave it uncovered. You see the steam? That's evaporation. We want to condense all these flavors. So that's what's going to take that and the, to let it um, tenderize the meat that's in here, these big chunks of meat. We want them to be super tender. I don't know why I couldn't do this in a crock pot other than it won't reduce because you have it covered. So all the moisture stays in there. But I don't know. This should be fine. Just a couple hours. If you were going to use mostly tomato product, you could totally do this in a crock pot, but I need the beef stock to reduce. So we're here. I'll show you when it's done. Okay, here's my lunch for tomorrow. I have, oh, there's a fly in here. I have some keto cornbread cubes. This is my chili that I made. Look at that. Isn't that delicious looking? It's so good. Um, I'm going to put some cheese wisps on top just for a little crunch. So those will go on. And for dessert, I made a keto coffee cake that looks delicious. So that's my lunch. I have to go into the office again tomorrow, so I'll be packing this. All right, let's see what else we can get into. Sorry for the fan noise, but I wanted to show you my sweater that I'm knitting. Um, this is the neck. So this is called a top-down sweater i'm on the floor so i can show you and this will be the neck over to the shoulders i'm almost at the point where i'll break off the arms and then do the body um this knitting right here is called color work and i'll show you on the inside hi buddy that you carry your threads across the back now that's a little tight in here so I'm hoping when I block it, it will lay flat. So yeah, there's my sweater. And there is Mr. Wellington. Say hi, buddy. Or not. Hi, baby. All right, guys. I hope you have a fantastic week. Bye.